Hello, my name is Wolfgang Birkfellner and I'm about to show you in this video how you can connect an RTC, a real-time clock module, to an AstroBerry and beyond that I'll also show you how to connect a GPS dongle via USB. And once we've done this we will see how one can synchronize the system time automatically using GPS and how one can automatically um, update the location also using the GPS data in K-Stars on the Astroberry. This time it's going to be a little bit nerdy. The Astroberry has a VLAN of its own right, but this is not connected to the outside world of course. If you want to synchronize the clock, you need to connect your Astroberry to a routed internet connection and this can be done by connecting a LAN cable to the Ethernet jack on the Raspberry. The Astroberry hotspot stays intact, but now you also have access to the outside world and the operating system of the Astroberry can synchronize the internal clock now. The effect is pretty obvious. I have my Astroberry here running on a Raspberry Pi 4 and as soon as I plug in the Ethernet cable I have to wait for a little while. You see now that I'm connected here. Still the Astroberry hotspot is active so I can still access the Astroberry from the outside and after a few seconds, the time is set to the correct value. The problem, however, is that this is not permanent. If I unplug the Astroberry and I turn it off, I will again have no possibility to access the correct time. So, I need a real-time clock. A variety of real-time clocks for the Raspberry Pi exist. The best one, in my opinion, is the DS3231, which is provided here, for instance, by Adafruit. However, you can use other modules of that type as well. The important thing is to connect it properly to the I2C port of the Raspberry. So first of all, it is necessary to connect the RTC to 3.3 volts power and ground. And in addition, one needs to connect the serial data wire, which is GPIO2 on the Raspberry, and the serial clock of I2C. So there's four wires in total, which have to be connected according to the description of your RTC to the Raspberry. Once everything is connected, you have to make sure that the I2C interface is activated on the Raspberry. So this is done by checking out the preferences, the settings, going to the interfaces tab and looking whether I2C is activated. Next thing is to follow the instructions on this homepage. learn.adafruit.com slash adding a real-time clock to Raspberry Pi I will also give this link in the description of this video. Then open up a terminal and type sudo i2cdetect-y1. What you will see is that there is a device connected and you see an address. But the first thing is to edit the config file of the Raspberry with the nano editor by typing sudo nano boot config text in the terminal again and add the line for the overlay of your particular RTC device in the end of this file. This is DT overlay equals I2CC RTC DS3231 and you save this by pressing Ctrl O and you exit the nano editor by pressing Ctrl X. This is equivalent to the BIOS in the Raspberry, so now the Raspberry knows that there is a real-time clock connected via I2C.
Next thing is to reboot your Raspberry. Again, we go to the Adafruit homepage where we find all these instructions. If we type i2c detect y1 into the terminal now, we'll see a UU where we saw the address of the i2c device first. So now we know that this real time clock is recognized and connected. The next thing is to remove the fake hardware clock, the pseudo hardware clock from the system. This is done by typing a number of commands. First of all, we tell apt-get to remove a program package called fake hardware clock. Next, we update the system uh, services. And as you can see, I'm copy pasting here. This is done by pressing Ctrl C on the home page. And pasting into a terminal is done by pressing Ctrl Shift V. So you can copy paste into a terminal, and that's pretty easy to do if you have such a web page as the extremely useful Adafruit homepage here. Next, we need to change a few settings for the hardware clock, again with the nano editor. And basically speaking, it is best to follow the home page here. So there's a few lines to be uncommented in this configuration file. Once this is done, you have to also uncomment two more lines in this code, which are found a little way down in that configuration file. And in the end, again, you save everything and you exit the nano editor. So what you do now is, after saving this, you can again connect your Raspberry Pi via a VLAN cable. And as you do have a real-time clock now, you can save the time from the system to the real-time clock by typing command sudo hwclock minus w, which means write. And now the time is saved. That was a little bit complicated and I strongly suggest to follow the instructions on the Adafruit homepage if you want to do that by yourself. But now I'm going to show you how you can update the time and location of your AstroBerry with a simple USB dongle, usually referred to as a UBlox device. Very cost efficient, available on the well known websites selling stuff. And now we'll also learn how to keep the time synchronized. Things are quite easy now. We plug in the dongle and we type sudo nano slash etc slash default slash gpsd into the terminal to open the configuration file for the GPS daemon. We add the line slash dev slash tty acm0 to the devices line. And after doing so, we save this file by pressing Ctrl O and we leave nano by pressing Ctrl X. Next, we can control whether the GPS device works by typing gpsmon minus n. And we see once we have a fix, that there is two positions popping up. The reason is that the virtual GPS of Astroberry is fighting with us. This can easily be solved by typing the two commands system control stop virtual GPS and system control disable virtual GPS. The virtual GPS points 
to Warsaw, which is the home of Radek, who brought Astroberry to us. And the other position is the position delivered by the GPS dongle. So, if you're somewhere in the field and you need a time signal, it makes sense to synchronize the system clock of your Astroberry with the time signal from the GPS receiver. For this, we need to manipulate the crony service, which is basically the NTP daemon for the Astroberry. And all we need to do is uncomment the last line, which reads ref clock SHM0 offset 0.5 delay, whatever, and change the GPS line to NMEA. And again, we have to press Ctrl O and Ctrl X to leave the Nano editor. Now I'm starting up the Raspberry again. The time is not set properly. It is not connected to an external network. It has no connection to a time server. And I'm plugging in the USB GPS receiver. I'm turning on the GPS monitor and now I see that there is no fix obtained yet. The receiver does not yet see any satellites. So we have to wait for a few seconds or even a few minutes. And I've abbreviated this here a little bit. So now a fix is being obtained in the next few seconds. And we'll see how time, latitude and longitude of my hometown Vienna are displayed properly. The next thing that will happen is that after a few more seconds, Crony will synchronize the system clock with this time signal. And now we have a very precise time set without the help of an external network and without the help of a real-time clock. Of course, we could also now synchronize the real-time clock with this time. Finally, I want to show to you how one can update the location in KSTARS from the GPS signal. The GPS receiver is connected, we have a fix, time is properly set and location is properly known from the GPS signal. And I'll start KSTARS here. My location is set to British Columbia in Canada, which is definitely not true as I am in Vienna. But what I can do now is I go to settings, KSTARS settings, Indie, and I tell Indy to update time and location using the GPS signal. I apply this setting, say OK, and now I connect to the Indy server that interfaces to the GPS daemon. This is an auxiliary driver. I find it here as GPSD. I start that service, I connect, I get a signal, and now location and time is set. And my position is set to the GPS location. You see that it has definitely changed, but this looks pretty reasonable. This is the skies I know. At that time of the year. So this works as well. Uh, it has to be noted that there's also a possibility to connect to a NEMIA server, for instance, running uh, an application on a cell phone. This is the GPS NEMIA in this uh, driver, and I have to admit that I was unable to make that work, at least with Android. That's it so far. Quite a technical one, but 
Also quite nice to have time and location available wherever you are. Thank you very much for your attention.